Hey, this is Gary Schultz from Cyclone Reef. And I'm Lila, his wife. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about shutting down the reef room here and uh, why we're doing it and uh, what does this mean to the channel, what does it mean to our hobby and um, you know how it's hit us uh, to want to do this you now. start by telling them how long have you been in the hobby? How many years? You know, I've been, okay, so my mom bought me a tank when I was nine years old, and uh, before that it was like little fish poles with goldfish, but she bought me a 10 gallon tank when I was nine, and I had just some tropical fish in there, and I was in the hobby for about five years back then, and then I kind of fell away, and then I came back to uh, the, um, uh, tropical fish hobby for quite a while, many years, and then I got saltwater. Um, about 35 years ago was my first saltwater tank. What kind of fish did you have in it? So I had a yellow tank, and this I probably had um, six to eight yellow tangs that died. In, in a, your lifetime or in, in that tank? In that 20 gallon <laughs> tank. Oh no. It was an eclipse system. So it was like an all-in-one, and it had an under gravel filter in it. I just I would bring the tanks home on Friday, and they'd be dead by the following Tuesday or Wednesday. Sometimes I'd get them to go for two weeks, and I just kept trying. And um, then I, the local fish store got some live rock, and they said, oh yeah, you got to put the live rock in. So I put the live rock in, and then I was able to keep a yellow tang alive for, I don't know, quite a few years in that little tank. Wow. So. When you first started in the fish hobby, what was it really like? I mean, there couldn't have been much technology. No, I mean, I just got books. I bought books from the library. I bought books on, um, well, you couldn't buy them online. You had to go to B. Dalton Bookseller or one of those, you know, to buy them. There was no online. No internet. No internet, really. <laughs> uh, they had, you know, like AOL was like at a gateway to the internet, but it was and then they had CompuServe, but it was, you know, like the hobby was non-existent on the internet. So I bought books and uh, I learned about the Gilbert method and um, it was a 55 and, uh, and, and I set it up with this Gilbert method where you put egg crate fluorescent light panel on the bottom of the tank and then you raise that up about an inch and so I made an egg crate bottom and then I put some screen over the top of that and then I put the live sand or just the you know sand that I could get. Back then it was Home Depot play sand that we'd get. Oh, wow. The white play sand that you put in your kid's sandbox that's what we'd get. It was really it was tropical sand from the beaches in Florida I suppose but uh, it was kind of hard to get and um, that's what I put in my first uh, uh, 55 gallon tank. And then I got a 60 gallon tank, and then I put the two in the corner of my basement and uh, kind of facing each other. And I had in one tank I had soft corals, and in the other tank I had uh, SPS corals. I was starting to mess around with a few more serious corals. And I had uh, high output fluorescent lights on that. And then um, I switched them out for 90 gallon tanks, and I built some fixtures. From Champion Lighting, I got metal halide. I got two 250 watt metal halides over each tank with two VHO lights over each tank. And um, we didn't know about alkalinity and calcium. We couldn't test for it. Couldn't test for really not very much of anything. We could test nitrates. We could test. So we did nitrates, we did pH and that was about it and we had uh, electronic meters from pinpoint for ph and you could tell if your ph was going up or down with a meter you know it's surprising you could be successful with as little as you did have yeah for testing but you know we had metal halides and those worked very well and uh, the vhos that i had were actinic so you got the glowing you know fluorescence from the corals and it worked out pretty good 
How, how did you get to know other, um, other people with the same hobbies? I mean, you know, being the internet wasn't big, there wasn't you know, a whole lot going on. How'd you, how'd you get to know others? So, I had, um, I think it was the 55 and the 65 in the corner, and I saw a sign at the local fish store. Mostly they sold tropical fish, you know. But I, they um, had a sign up there and it said, River South Reef Keepers Meeting, and um, it had a date, and I went to the meeting. And it was the first meeting. Oh, well, actually it was the second meeting of River South Reef Keepers. The first one was at a Perkins where the guys came up with his flyer. And then uh, the second one was, uh, was just five of us there. And we talked about starting this reef club, and which we did. And uh, we elected one of the guys president. And um, so one of the guys that started the club also started Reef Central, and with some other people. He was a, you know, pretty hyper guy. <laughs> and he had some tanks, and he lived fairly close. And I got to know those guys pretty good, and there were others. And um, <coughs> Riley wants to be in. Yeah. <laughs> you're supposed Hi, right. to be upstairs. So anyways, you know, the club started, it grew pretty quick. And um, uh, yeah, there's maybe 100 people in there. We decided to change the name after about five years to Twin City Marine Aquarium Society. Uh, now I think there's six, 700 members in the club, so it's doing quite well. Um, I've never been real interested in being uh, part of the board of directors and all of that and running the club, but I've been a member for most of my adult life. <laughs> okay, since I started for 35 years. <laughs> well, how about maintenance? Um, having changed that long. So I probably done, I don't know, I've done, I've done at least a thousand water changes in my life, maybe more. <laughs> I suppose. That's a lot of years. Uh, I've had um, numerous floods in both of our houses. Um, too many to count, I've, and usually because I did something stupid. Well, it's easy to get <clears> sidetracked. <throat> if you're doing a water change and you happen to just, oh, I'm gonna clean this up while that bucket's filling or whatever it might be, or you didn't catch the nozzle in time, it's easy to have. I, oh, yeah. I can imagine most people. And big that. ones with overflows and stuff. I mean, back in the day, all we had were timers. You know, so, you know, you, I mean, those old dial timers that you got from Menards, that's what you used. Um, and then I got X10 controllers, and so I set up my dual 90 tanks with X10 controllers, and that was pretty cool. Um, the only thing left from that system that I still have is my RO tank that's still in this house today. Oh, wow. And I've been using that for, you know, 30, 30 years probably. About 30 years I've had that tank. So, yeah, I've been around for a long time. I've had three or four purple tangs, you know, and, um, you know, I've had lots of fish for a long time, and I've had lots of fish that have come and gone. And you've bought and sold lots of, of corals. And... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I've fragged so many corals over the years and sold them. And, you know, back in the day, we, it was never about selling things. We just traded corals because we didn't, I mean, a lot of people here, you have your tank set up for a few years and it would crash. So we distributed our corals throughout the club. We'd trade them back and forth and I'll give you this one if you give me that one and so on. And there, the value of the coral was kind of one for one. There was really no coral that was like, ooh, that one's really nice. It's more expensive than mine. We just traded them one for one. And the reason is because if your tank crashed, you wanted an insurance policy that you could get your corals back. And that so we sense. just, you know, spread them all around the club. But the club was, I mean, really, there were about 50 really active members back in the beginning, five years or so. And then beyond that, there was maybe another 50 that were come and go. Um, but that's what we did. And then it kind of turned into this whole sell corals thing that people have been doing in recent years. So more monetary here than now, which I understand. Some of these yeah. corals are rare and hard to get and so on, and we've, we've been involved in that, so. Yeah. So you've spent a lot of time down here in the basement doing the fragging and doing okay. the water changes and the cleaning. And you did it because you were passionate about it. Yeah, I You love the hobby. Yeah. You do. But I think um, 
probably anybody, you know, after a time, if you eventually things are gonna change you and you don't wanna spend quite this much time chained to it. Yeah, you know, I can understand. Well, I you know, I love it and I, I like I would keep doing this until I, I I died. But what happens if I if I pass away, you know, I've had a few heart attacks and I've had some health issues in the last, you know, scary stuff in the last few years. That's five, six. Five to six, yeah. And, um, you know, I always think, the first thing I think is, I'm in the hospital and my stuff isn't getting taken care of and what's going to happen? Uh, Lila knows a little bit, enough to be dangerous, but what happens? I mean, remember when I went to China? Yeah, what happened? terrible. You went to China and um, I'll never forget, I came down, I think it was the first day, second day you were gone maybe, I mm -hmm. mean it happened right away, and the pump had quit on the 60 gallon, um, deep 60 gallon we had for fish only. Yeah. And it, the, <clears throat> the motor quit. I, I unplugged it, I plugged it back in, I tried everything I could, I couldn't get it to restart. And I thought, you have some expensive fish in there mm -hmm. and you're going to be not happy if you come back and, and they're dead. So I called repeatedly, probably 20 times, but probably in China it was night when it was day here, vice versa, you know, you just... Spotty cell phone, cell phone coverage, coverage yeah, and, when and I was bad timing. In some areas. Was, you were probably busy or sleeping. So I just decided, <clears> I thought, okay, it's 11, I need to do something with these fish. They're not gonna live overnight, probably with no no pump, no air going through the tank. And so I took a five gallon bucket and I filled it halfway with that tank water, caught every one of those fish with the big net, got them in there, and every 15 minutes I put so much water from the other tank, mm -hmm. just to acclimate them to the tank that wasn't connected to that system. Yeah. So I went ahead and I put them in our 60 gallon freight tank. So it was a raccoon, <laughs> butterfly, uh, clown, trigger fish. Um, angel, um, emperor, angel. Em emperor, emperor angel fish, yeah, big one. And it's a, just a 60 gallon frag tank, so she put those all in there. I didn't want them to die. Didn't the tanks, the tanks were fine, but you know, so she, then finally I talked to her like, the next uh, day. Yeah, and she, she told me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're going to eat all the corals. So no. I'm like worried the what whole time. What it was is that I went to bed finally at 12.30 that night, and you called during the night and left a voice message on my voice now, my phone, cell phone, and it said, under no conditions are you to put those in a frag tank. They will eat my frags. Don't do it. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And so I, I get up, I listen to the message, I'm like, too little, too late. <laughs> I couldn't talk to you. I did what I could. So but you know what? It's it worked okay. out. It, it uh, and, yeah, it worked out. I mean, the, the fish actually didn't eat they any did. of the corals, and we left them in there for quite a while. Yeah. But um, I don't think we ever did set up that fish only again. Mm -hmm. I sold off some of them. Yeah, fish. you got rid of that. But um. But anyway. bottom, bottom line, I mean, basically. I can't be gone. I can't be gone with all this stuff running down here in the basement. I can't. I like. I do dosing stuff every day. I check on things every day. I don't care how many cameras I've got around here. I, I need to be here to check things. You know, stupid uh, radion lights lose their connection to the apex all that time, and I am having trouble figuring that one out. So, bottom line, I feel like I need to be here. We've gone on some vacations for a week and a half, ten days at a time, and. The whole time I'm checking on the cameras and checking on the tanks and I'm thinking, boy oh boy, you know, what if something, you know, floods? The kids wouldn't know what to do. What if I pass away? What are they going to do with all this stuff, you know? So it's a little bit, I mean, like a ball and chain. Because over the last year we've done a lot of talking and at some point we're going to retire. Yep. And so basically that's kind of why we've come to this point. Well, yeah. you're going to downsize. And I'm 64 years old, you know. In a month. So, yeah, in a month. And, <laughs> nice. and so, uh, you know, I could probably go for 10 more years. The bottom line is, though, this is a hole in our pocket. Um, I don't care how many frags I sell. I might be up one month, but then I'm way down the next month. You know, I bought, I had to replace the pump. $350 for a new pump. 
Um, I'm buying salt. I don't buy the cheap stuff. I'm buying that Tropic Marin salt. 90 bucks for a bucket of that, you know? I'm buying all these additives and I'm dosing manually and I'm dosing automatically and I'm doing all kinds of things. It all costs. I mean, my bulk reef supply bill is probably $200 a month to have all this running. So, you know, there's a hole in our pocket and it's this tank. Our electric bill is $250 a month from all of this. So we're just kind of like, how do we retire and live on Social Security and our savings with this big hole in our pocketbook, even if we sell frags? I always thought, oh, I could retire and do more with frags. I don't believe that I could ever make enough money off selling frags and stuff to pay for the expense of all this. So the bot, unless, you know, I mean, I don't know, maybe some places can do it. I'm not a big company. You know, uh, taxes on a business is really pretty high. I just don't see being able to do that. Um, so. So the stress and busyness and cost. Um, oh God, yeah, the stress. What? If a coral starts to look lousy, I'm stressed out, man. You know, if all of a sudden the alkalinity drops down to eight and a half, I'm going, what happened? I got to do something. I'm freaking out, and it's stressful. And when I get stressed, that's hard on my heart. And it's hard on the wife. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see him stressed out. But I mean, that's a reality. I mean, yeah. those three things are what we're talking about um, is the reason we're going to downsize the basement system and leave yeah. just the 60 gallon yeah. upstairs. So we've gone back and forth on this, you know, and I just like, I put so much blood, sweat, and tears in building all of this and maintaining all of this and put all kinds of love into it. I hate to do it. But. I sold some big corals last year to a guy in the club, and uh, they're thriving at his house. One of them died, which is sad, Joe the coral, but the rest of them are doing okay, and I still have a piece of Joe that's grown up to a pretty big chunk now, so um, I'm selling him. So I think what we're going to do is take one of the radions and put it over the 60 upstairs, and then take some of my um, rarest frags and put them in the 60 upstairs and see if we can just have some SPS mixed reef thing going up there and just put some of my favorite stuff up there and keep it going and it's small enough that if something happened we could empty that tank and move it without too much trouble and you know I mean that's probably a step in retirement right you can't keep the five bedroom house that you raised your kids in eventually you gotta say we're gonna downsize the house and we dream of, you know, travel. We dream of going to Hawaii and actually seeing the reefs. We'd love to go to Australia and see the great coral reef. Um, we, we dream of, a, of buying another RV. Um, RV, yeah. We had a really nice one. We sold it because I lost my job. We couldn't make the payments. And now I'm working again. I've got a great job. I don't plan to retire from my job anytime soon. Probably not for years. But we'd like to travel. And um, I could do that with this job. I get plenty of vacation. I could travel and we could use that RV to the hills. Well, we've got kids that live out of state. Yeah. And you want to you want to go visit your kids. You want to go stay for a week or two weeks and spend some time with them. Yeah. Um, we, we haven't done that for a long time. And there's really nobody in the club that lives around here anymore. I mean, the club started right around here within a couple of mile radius. Now everybody is like, 20, 30 miles away, maybe even 50 miles away. They're all up on the north side of the city or on the river south side of the city. So um, anyway, so we're gonna sell everything off. We're selling off all the big corals first. Then we're gonna sell off all the frags and stuff. And um, you know, I'll probably give away stuff at the end. And uh, I plan to take the frag tank down first. Then we're gonna take this tank down. Now I'm not sure if I'm gonna remove this tank from the wall. I may just empty it out and I may make it into a fish only, but there again, it's kind of stressful to have this big thing going that could flood while we're gone. We're gonna decide on that later.
This channel does not end though. No. We have plenty to talk about. <laughs> We've got plenty of friends. We're going to stay in the club. We still have our, our tank upstairs. We still have plenty of uh, reef rooms to explore. We have plenty of, of videos that we can make. So we won't be quitting doing this. We might start making more travel videos though. Yeah, if we travel places, one of the things, we said let's go to the, you know, places that have the large aquariums and check things like that out. I've never even seen that big aquarium in Atlanta. I've never seen the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. You know, oh, New Orleans. New Orleans, I've seen that one. That's pretty cool. But... We've seen <laughs> some in Las Vegas. We've seen, yeah. But we want to see it all. I mean, we want to go to Hawaii and swim on the reef. We want to go to, um, you know, we've swam in the Caribbean on the reef, but we'd like to see, I mean, the dream would be, let's go to Fiji, you know, and actually see a reef, and we'll bring that all to you on this channel if it ever happens, you know, maybe we can do that someday. So, so if you're into travel vlogs, you know, check out our 2019 Sturgis videos that are on this channel. I mean, it's all Cyclone Productions under the one umbrella I just make uh, you know folders for for uh, all the different things that we make videos about I love making videos we've got the equipment we might find more I'll probably get deeper into that hobby and make some more videos but um, anyways uh, I appreciate everybody that's been watching uh, please don't just unsubscribe stay subscribed there's a whole lot more good stuff to come uh, this is not going to be about my basement so much anymore. <laughs> we like to stay busy. It yeah. doesn't matter if we're getting older and retire, we'll probably get more busy than ever. Yeah, and you never know, I might set up another tank again like an idiot. I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, this is Gary from uh, Cyclone Reef. And Lila. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.